Last year, the electrical industry did what it rarely does. It dropped a bombshell. Out of nowhere, the great and the good who write the rules, yes, those people released PAS 63100. Now, that might sound like an obscure country road, the sort you'd never choose to drive down. Except now, if you're installing home battery storage, you're being forced down it. Tucked inside this document was a very specific bit of guidance. Don't install batteries in lofts. Do install them outside. And whatever you do, keep them away from doors and windows. For installers, that meant one thing, problems. Because let's be honest, most existing systems weren't designed for life outdoors. You're suddenly dealing with weatherproofing, mounting challenges, safety clearances, and then there's the biggest issue of all, they look awful. Black and white boxes, bolted to brickwork, eyesores on every driveway. Then came a glimmer of hope. Enter the Anker X1, a sleek, high-spec battery, not just designed to survive outside, but look like it belongs there. In this video, we're putting it to the test beyond the good looks and starry night display. Is it a unit worthy of your next install? Let's find out. Before we start, let's get to the most satisfying part of any installation, that's peeling the cellophane off the display. Oh, how satisfying is that? So I'll challenge you to find a better looking home energy storage system. This unit is gorgeous. And the screen on the front there, the starry night display, as Anchor describe it, is one of the standout features. It allows you to see exactly what's going on with your home energy system in terms of how much battery capacity you've got, how much solar you're generating, and how much power you're using in the home. If I was to walk away from this unit, this would dim down and switch off. So the whole unit will sit discreetly where you've put it on the outside of your house. And like me, this unit is incredibly slim, a little bit more than the depth of our iPhone Pro Max. Why is that important? Well, for a lot of UK homes, this will probably end up being installed on the side return, down the side of the garage and the gap between your house and the house next door, where typically there's not a lot of space, but it's conveniently located for where your power infrastructure is and probably away from any doors or windows for those requirements of PAS 63100. So being so slim has the advantage it's not going to take up much room on the path so you can still get your bins down there on bin day and obviously things in and out of the back garden. So this is an all-in-one system. Everything you need for your home energy management system is contained in this stack here. Starting at the top we have the power module that is both the inverter taking the power from the solar modules and also managing the battery and then the power to the grid. And then beneath it we have the modular power packs each one five kilowatt hours so you can build up a stack and a system to match the needs of the property but the great thing about this modular approach is you can easily expand it should things change in the future perhaps you add a heat pump or an ev charge and find that you need more storage capacity or you want to trade those cheap off-peak energy prices on this side of the x1 is all of the infrastructure for the dc side of the installation there's isolators for the battery modules and also for the pv arrays which keeps the installation nice and neat and tidy of course it is a contentious issue some installers like to add additional isolators let me know what you think about that in the comments my option would be to rely on the ones that are built into the unit and on these ones you can also lock them in the off position and on this side is the infrastructure for the ac side of the installation our power back out to the grid and you could add an additional power cable for backup loads along with a communication cable that goes to the metering side so you know what the power consumption of the property and green exporter to the grid is along with a communications dongle so we can get that app up and running all great end user features but what is it like to install we've got a trial unit here in our workshop just to get the grips with the unit and it's a simple process we've opted for this ground mounted base plate here of which everything stacks on top of there is another option to have a wall mounted version which could be good in areas areas possibly that are subject to flooding where you want to stay and install above the flood barrier. Although this is a waterproof unit and is protected for extremes of temperature from minus 20 to plus 55 degrees C, that balmy summers that we get here in the UK. They even supply 
this handy foam knee pad in the packaging, which protects your knees and is rather useful when you're assembling the battery stack. Installation is straightforward. I did watch the comprehensive video by Anchor before attempting this, but there are two things you really need once you've got that. The first one is this template, which sets out the exact positions of all of the brackets. Just put it on the first module and then mark off each module as you go to put the brackets in exactly the right place. And then it's just a case of simply lifting the batteries onto the brackets. After you've done that, it's over to the IKEA style instructions that steps you through the entire installation process. My top tip, follow exactly what it says and you can't go wrong. Bring the modules into place, bolt them together with the little brackets that go between each module, and then you're onto wiring. And it's really as simple as that. The wiring, all pre-terminated, plug together the battery leads, plug together the earth links between the modules, add the communications links, and then blank off any unused ones that you may need to revisit for future expansion. And that's it, job done. Over to the main side, again, plug and socket connections. The only tricky bit of the installation is you do need to insert an electricity meter or a mid type meter in line with the meter tails coming into the property but that's a classic electrician issue top tip coming on how i would do that in a real life installation mechanical and electrical installation is incredibly straightforward but there's that last piece of the installation that can throw even the best of installers off course and that is commissioning hooking it up to the app and putting in all those all important parameters the unit can connect via a Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. So let's just see how easy that is. Signed into the Anchor Solex professional app. Basically, I can see a stepped process here. So system build, should have worn my glasses. System name, we'll call it eFix. Take a picture. Right, connect device, we're into it now. Scanning for, make sure the battery switch is on. It is, enter the device password. Uh -huh. The excitement's killing me. Zero, 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 yeah. Slowest part of the process is me, not having my glasses. I have to look in that panel to get that password. It's made a Bluetooth connection, so next connect to the network. Very similar process to anyone who's installed an EV charger so far. Connect to Bluetooth, put onto the Wi-Fi. Connecting there while it's doing that, I'll just put this access panel back. So well, it's connected, that didn't take long. Right, firmware update, that is, since it's left the factory, improvements have been made. This update will take about 15 minutes, probably time for a cup of tea and a biscuit. <laughs> less than 15 minutes. I haven't quite finished my tea and my biscuit. Check. The meter is correctly connected. That is correctly configured. Advanced. Oh, I tell a little porky here. We haven't done a G99 application. But obviously, if you were doing a proper install, you would ask for that in advance. Unless you defaulted back to the other version, you'd probably get a G98 on it and you can then uh, ask for permission afterwards. System testing. Start. Let's see. I'm going to say power module test. Power module working. System debugging complete. Ready for delivery to the user. Have you got a heat pump? Interesting. So is smart grid ready as well? That is it. We have completed the commissioning of the system and set up. Perhaps we'll coin this in this video for the first time ever. Can you commission a solar system in less time than it takes to drink a cup of tea? Oh, it's still hot. And of course, if you're having any trouble with commissioning, there's a UK-based support team on hand and ready to help. Let's recap on the tech specs. We've installed the Anker Solix X1 single phase system, available in four configurations, 3.68 kilowatts for G98 applications, or 4.6, 5 and 6 kilowatts for both on-grid and off-grid modes. Equipped with a power module featuring two MPPT solar inputs, capable of supporting solar array inputs from 7 kilowatts to 12 kilowatts. Each battery module offers 5 kilowatt hours of storage, with the flexibility to connect up to 6 batteries per power module. Need even greater capacity. Three power modules can be connected in parallel, delivering up to 18 kilowatts of power and an impressive 90 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Designed for durability, these units are IP66 rated and include a 10-year warranty for added peace of mind. And for those tougher environments, think 
coastal locations or industrial areas, the system's been tested to a C5 corrosion rating. That means it's built to resist rust and deterioration even in the most aggressive conditions, helping ensure it keeps performing reliably no matter where it's installed. I'll drop a link to the Anker Solix range in the description. Let me know if you have any further questions. Oh, how satisfying is that?